A year later at the 1980 NBA All-Star Game, league owners voted to admit the Dallas team into the league. During the initial few months of the franchise, the Dallas Basketballers would be the placeholder name until a local radio station, WBAP, held the Name the Team contest among listeners. After receiving more than 4,600 entries over three weeks, the results were turned over to a five-person committee. The committee narrowed down the choices to the Wranglers, Express, and Mavericks, and presented them to owner Don Carter, who had the ultimate decision. Then, on May 1, 1980, team officials gathered the media in Reunion Station to announce the name. A blue and green flip chart revealed the chosen name suggested by 41 fans during the contest. The Mavericks. One of those fans, Carla Springer, a freelance writer who won a drawing for season tickets for her participation, said the nickname represents the independent, flamboyant style of the Dallas people. The team's name was also inspired by the 1957-1962 TV western Maverick, starring James Garner, who was actually a member of the original ownership group. Interestingly, down the road, the University of Texas at Arlington also used the Mavericks nickname, having changed from their Rebels identity in 1971. They objected to sharing the name, so much so that they ended up printing 10,000 bumper stickers with the phrase, Mavericks, nowhere but UTA, and passing them out all over town. The term Maverick comes from Samuel Maverick, an early Texas rancher who didn't brand his cattle, either due to laziness or in order to claim ownership of wild cattle. Since they were unbranded, other ranchers would come to call them Mavericks. Eventually, the term would be recognized as meaning wild or untamed and could be used to describe someone as unorthodox or independent-minded. Norm Sanju, the first general manager, said that the team's original colors, green and blue, were chosen because they both represented a North Texas countryside scheme and because Reunion Arena, already under construction, had blue and green seats. Sanju cleverly mimicked these colors so it looked like the arena had actually been built for the team. Let's not imagine what the Mavericks would have looked like had the seats been brown and yellow, or anything worse. The original Mavericks logo is a green basketball adorned with the letter M and a cowboy hat next to the team's name in a western-styled font in blue with a green border. It was developed by Bill Wynn of Stark Design Marketing, Inc. It underwent 77 revisions before it was finally approved by ownership. The italicized M was meant to depict movement, while the hat was a little nod to Don Carter's trademark white cowboy hat. One of Sanju's main points of focus was on not allowing Mavericks to be shortened like the college team did. UTA frequently truncated Mavericks into Mavs, but with Sanju running the professional franchise, he would ensure you only saw the complete Dallas Mavericks during his tenure. The booming echoes of Let's Go Mavs were very far off. For the inaugural 1980-1981 season, the Mavericks would have traditional home and away uniforms. Debuting against the future hated rival San Antonio Spurs, the team won their first game in their traditional home set. It included a white base with blue-white-green ribbing on the jersey's neckline and armholes and on the short's notch leg holes and waistband. Mavericks was in all caps in a rustic blue font with white and green trim, numbers that matched, the player's name on the back or NOB, and the cowboy hat logo on the left leg of the shorts. The road set was similar but featured a blue base with green-white-green green ribbing and Dallas in the same font but with white coloring and blue and green trim. The word mark was slightly different than the one featured in the logo, being slightly skinnier and taller. These uniforms were produced by Rawlings for the team and were made out of nylon and polyester and had triple layer tackle twill for the word marks, logo, names, and numbers. Unfortunately, the Mavericks wouldn't see many more wins in these, finishing the season 15 and 67. Past Mavs who wore these include Tom Lagarde, Brad Davis, and Jim Spinarkle. The 
the next season with the arrival of Mark Aguirre, Rolando Blackman, and Jay Vincent. The Mavericks switched up their uniforms slightly. They would mostly stay the same, but the team opted to switch green for blue on their road sets. With its green base and blue-white-blue ribbing, the Dallas Mavericks had found their most striking identity, one that has fans clamoring for a return some 40 years later. Experiencing moody madness and reaching Game 7 of the Western Conference Finals, these are the uniforms the Mavericks would find their early success in, going 418 and 402 from 1981 to 1991. Past Mavs who wore these include those mentioned before, along with Brad Davis, Derek Harper, Dale Ellis, Sam Perkins, Detlef Shrimp, Uwe Blob, James Donaldson, and Roy Tarpley. Things would stay mostly the same for a while, with only the manufacturer and supplier changing from Rawlings to McGregor Sandnet in 1986 and a champion in 1990.